let's take a look at the 68-95-97 rule. Now what this rule is saying is that when we draw out a curve of data, 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation, 95 within two standard deviations, and 97 within three standard deviations. Let's take a look at the picture of what that is saying. So if we have a normally distributed or bell-shaped data distribution with the mean in the center, we're going to be interested in three standard deviations to each side. So I'm going to draw in three standard deviations. I'm going to highlight the middle one, pink, to indicate this is the mean or the average. What this is saying is that 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation. Now, since the bell curve is symmetrical, we know this means that 34% falls to the left and 34% falls to the right, 68 divided by 2. Now the next thing we can look at is two standard deviations from the mean. 95% of data falls within two standard deviations of the mean. But you have to remember we've already considered 68% with the yellow bars. So 95% minus 68 means we're adding an additional 27% or 135 on each side. Lastly, within three standard deviations of the mean, we have 97% of the data. Excuse me, that's 99.7%. It helps to have all of your decimal places in there. So almost all of our data, or 99.7%, falls within three standard deviations of the mean. Now remember, we've already taken into consideration 95% of our data with the up to the two standard deviations. So adding in one more standard deviation is only adding in an additional 4.7%, or if we divide that by two, 2.35% to each bar or each half. Now this curve actually will look the same for any normally distributed data point. Any data that falls in with a normal distribution, the values for each bar will be the same. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at the specific problem. I have a mean of 85. I'm going to fill that in for the pink bar or the average and a standard deviation of 5. What that means is each one of these bars is going up by 5. And so if you look just at the right-hand side, it's saying 34% of the data should fall between 85 and 90. Then I'll go ahead and fill in the lower half. Each bar is 5, and moving to the left means we are decreasing by 5. We're subtracting our standard deviations. Now we get to have some fun making some predictions. Predict the, no, the percent of scores less than 85. Well, if you notice, the 85 mark is the exact halfway or the exact um, middle of this. So 50% does fall to the left and 50% to the right. Now before we go on just for the part B, it may be helpful to, f to fill in the, um, the amount that come above 99.7. So if we have this bar here and this bar here, above and below three standard deviations of the mean, there is not much data because you have to realize we've already considered 99.7% of the data, leaving us with just 0.3% or 0.15 on each side that fall very, very high or very, very low. That's going to help us with our next part.
Percentage of scores greater than 90. Well, 90 is right here. Greater than 90 goes this way. I'm going to go ahead and add up all of my percents greater than 90. And I think having the picture really does help when you can see those percents right on a diagram. 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0.15 gives you 16 percent. Lastly, the percentage of scores between 75, I'm going to color that green, and 90. Oh, my pen got a little too happy there. 75 and 90. Now I can clearly see what's in between and add up the corresponding percents. 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 gives me a percentage of 81.5. So my first recommendation would be to draw a picture. Remember, you're welcome to use the starting picture we have here and just fill in these bottom values depending on your situation. Then you want to carefully look at each of your um, given percents or ranges and think about how that relates to your diagram.